a Visio drawing of my network infrastructure. I have a domain with a domain name of anishnabimoin.biz. This network consists of two physical machines. One is at the address 10.67.0.4. This particular machine hosts a virtual network of 10.67.0.0, which is partially a virtual network and also is partially a physical network. And part of this virtual network has another network the 10.68.0.0 network which is separated via this virtual router and what that does is that separates my demilitarized zone which this particular server is in my DMZ my web server I want it to be where it's accessible to the public but there are other resources that I want to not be accessible to the public. So I have my uh, DC2, which contains my DNS, my secondary zone for DNS, a redundant DHCP server, and also my exchange. Now in a typical exchange situation, you would have your mailbox and client role in this uh, in your inside your network and outside your network you would have a in your DMZ with your web server you would have an edge transport server but since this is a small network we've uh, foregone the edge transport server role and we've just installed Microsoft Exchange uh, within our domain we also have DC1 which is our domain controller for anishnabimowin.biz. It also has DNS and DHCP. This server has the primary DNS zone and DC2 is a secondary DNS zone which we'll talk about uh, once we get a little further into the video. As you can see the network is separated from the outside world by a NAT box network address translation on the inside it has private IP address that's in the 10.67.0.0 network and on the outside I've labeled these two IP addresses but I actually have several IP addresses on the outside of the NAT box and the NAT box serves to uh, do just that it, it's a network address translation so when traffic comes in through this router this router is able to route that traffic to whichever resources on the inside of this network are being requested. So we'll come back to this drawing throughout this video series and uh, we'll discuss the different implications of the different devices that are within this network. I'm going to log into my domain controller which provides the services of DNS, DHCP, Active Directory. So you'll notice I'm logging in under a domain user account, not the default uh, administrator built-in account. There are several reasons you would want to do this, mainly for accountability and security. It's always a good idea that each domain user has their own account and doesn't share accounts. So the first thing that comes up is the server manager dashboard. Now from this dashboard we can see the roles that are installed on this particular server. You could also manage, uh, remotely manage other servers from this dashboard. Uh, I only have the one server being managed by this dashboard. So you see we have, like I said, uh, Active Directory, DHCP, and DNS installed. This video is going to cover the DNS portion of this project. 
So these links over here, you would think if you clicked on them, they would take you to the management console for those particular items, but they don't. They would bring up on this control panel, this dashboard here, if you had other servers that had the DNS role installed and were configured to be managed from this server, they would appear here. But to manage DNS, we go up here to Tools, click on that, and we'll get a drop-down menu. Again, it shows all the roles that are installed and the, all the services. So we're going to look at DNS, and DNS is Domain Name Services, and or domain name systems, excuse me. So in this particular video I want to talk about how names are resolved within a domain. In a previous video I talked about how domain names are or names are resolved uh, via the root of the internet and the root of the internet is basically the authoritative name servers for public records. Uh, the DNS root zone is the top level DNS zone that would contain the .com, .edu, .org, etc. Uh, domains. Okay, so forward lookup zones. Um, we're here in the uh, the DNS manager in the uh, MMC, uh, the Microsoft Management Console. So forward lookup zone, what that does is that maps host names to IP addresses and then reverse lookup zone does the opposite. Um, it maps IP addresses to host names. So when you first install DNS on a machine, this particular record or this particular folder is created automatically. And this zone is a zone that I added. So if you were going to add a zone, you right click, click new zone, and you would follow the wizard. Um, not going to do that here because I've already done it. So we're going to look at some of the records that I've already created. Uh, when you first create a zone, a start of authority record and a name server record are automatically uh, created. The start of authority record there's a little bit of configuration that would need to be done in this uh, record when you first start up. You may have to put the uh, primary server in here and you definitely have to change the name servers over here. So because I have DNS installed on DC2 as well it's listed in here as uh, one of the name servers. The uh, name server record is pretty much the same as the start of authority record if you go in here and you look um, it says a, pretty much the same information um, it's got information about zone transfers um, just pretty much the same information um, as the start of authority record so there's several types of records that would be stored in a uh, DNS file uh, or in a DNS zone. Um, in addition to the start of authority and name server, you have a host record or a record. And what those are, those are uh, records that return a 32-bit IPv4 address, as we can see here, 10.68.0.10. Uh, which is this server's IP address, private IP address, um, and most commonly used to map uh, host names to IP address IP addresses. There are um, other records, um, for example, an AAAA record, which does the same thing, but instead it uses the IPv6 128-bit uh, IP address to map to uh, host names or host names to IP addresses. There are uh, C names, which I don't have in here, um, but what you can do, you can right click in this field or over on the, the folder. And to add a C name, a C name is a canonical name um, or an alias. 
So for example, sometimes out on the web when people are looking for a web page, they're going to preface the address with www. So as you type the alias in here, it uh, populates this field down here. It appends www dot to the uh, start of the domain name. And you can either put the full, fully qualified domain name in here or you can put the IPv6 uh, address in here, which is what I'm going to do. So our, our web server, which is what somebody would be looking for when they type www dot into their browser, is 10.67.0.2. So we just say OK and that record is created. So now we have a, a C name or an alias name. This can also be used for other situations. Uh, for example, uh, if you have other domain names and you want them directed to your uh, to your particular website or um, just there's there's a few different things that can be done with that. Um, MX records, which is what this is, that's your uh, mail exchange record and it maps a domain name to a uh, list of message transfer agents for that particular domain. So what that does is when somebody sends mail to uh, myself at anishnabmon.biz, this record tells that, uh, that mail packet where to go, basically. So that's pretty much um, the different types of records. Uh, in a forward lookup zone and reverse lookup zone not something you really have to do a whole lot with um, as you add the records for the forward lookup zone these uh, automatically get populated um, one thing that you do want to uh, make sure that that you do is to have a zone transfer set up and you don't you don't want zone transfers to your primary DNS, but any secondary DNS. That way, whenever you uh, create a record on your primary zone or your uh, primary DNS uh, server, those records will automatically be updated to uh, any secondary uh, DNS server. So it eliminates a lot of extra work. Um, zone transfers, uh, if, you're, if they're set up uh, automatically um, they'll occur pretty much um, there's three scenarios in which that will happen um, anytime the DNS service on the secondary DNS server is started uh, or restarted it's going to send a request to the primary DNS server to update its records uh, when the refresh time you can set a refresh time on zone transfers when that expires it will send a request uh, for an update and then pretty much anytime you add a record or update a record, like I said, um, zone transfer will uh, happen uh, to the secondary zones. So in order to have redundancy, that's that's really the, the reason for having primary and secondary zones. You want to have the ability that people can still reach the resources either within the domain or from outside the domain. Uh, if for whatever reason this DNS server went down there would still be uh, the ability to uh, access those resources so having more than than one server uh, with DNS installed DHCP installed that is going to uh, provide redundancy so that if something happens to one your your network isn't down okay so one other thing to touch on with DNS is forwarders so what a forwarder does is when a uh, workstation requests a resource web page or something of that nature that the primary DNS server does not have a record for it will forward that request to another DNS server so for example there is no record uh, on this DNS server for google.com so since it cannot find a record for that it needs to know what to do with the request and so that's where 
forwarders come into play. So um, if we go in and we look at the properties for forwarders, we can see that uh, forwarders are DNS servers that this server can use to resolve DNS queries for records that the server cannot resolve. So in other words, just like I said, so I have this one set up to go to Google. Uh, you could set it up to go to whatever uh, DNS server you wanted. Um, so if there was nothing listed in here for forwarders, this checkbox, uh, if you check it, it says use root hints if no forwarders are available. So root hints are uh, similar to forwarders. So if we go in here and we look at root hints, uh, we'll see that there are uh, several servers listed. So root hints resolve queries for zones that do not exist in the local DNS server. And they're only used if the forwarders are not configured or they fail to respond. So in our case, in uh, forwarders, uh, we have our, our router and we have Google. So if for some reason neither one of these can resolve or doesn't respond, it's going to go to root hints and it's going to uh, query these public servers. Um, so with, the other thing with forwarders too, you see there's conditional forwarders. Conditional forwarders, um, that's more for um, security and uh, access control. Um, it's kind of beyond the scope of this video. So I'm not going to really uh, go into that, how that particular uh, service works. So one other thing um, with DNS, DNS can either be standalone or it can be Active Directory integrated DNS. So in our case, because we have installed Active Directory, it is Active Directory integrated. So according to Microsoft's TechNet site, which is a great site, um, sometimes it's a little bit dry and it's uh, a little bit hard to follow, but it, it's a good good resource if you're trying to find information but according to their site uh, DNS server services uh, is integrated into the design of the Active Directory so Active Directory provides an enterprise level tool for organizing managing and locating resources in a network so when you install Active Directory on a server and promote the server to a role of domain controller uh, you are prompted to specify a DNS domain name for Active Directory domain which you are joining and promoting the server. So what that does is it kind of streamlines the process. So zones are replicated and synchronized to the uh, new domain controller automatically whenever a new one is added to an Active Directory domain. So in other words, anytime you join a computer, whether it's a server, or a workstation, it's automatically, records are automatically created uh, to map that computer's uh, fully qualified domain name to its IP address. So it just kind of streamlines the process um, and it streamlines database replication across the network. Uh, directory replication is faster and more efficient than standard DNS and there are also security benefits that again are beyond the scope of this particular video. That concludes part one, DNS network infrastructure. Please join me in part two, DHCP in network infrastructure. Thanks.